So I've got 28 backgrounds here for cards. All right, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do it. We're gonna do it right now in today's video. Gel printing for card makers. It can be done and it is so much fun. So these are my very loved, <laughs> as you can see, eight by 10 gel press plates. So I'm gonna go ahead, that's all dried up paint from the last session. I've got random brands of acrylic paint. No rhyme, no reason. It's just regular acrylic paint and it's not the heavy body acrylic paint. So I've got this little little tube is from Arteza, Arteza, something like that. I got it off of Amazon. You get like 36 colors in these little tubes. So I use a lot of that and then just some other paints I have lying around. As long as it's not heavy body, I believe it will move on your plate. And then I just put little dots of color as you can see and then I'm using a brayer. Different brands, I've got Ranger, I've got Jelly Arts. I mean, just, you know, use what you can find, use what you have, obviously, if you already have it. Uh, but you will need some kind of plate and some kind of brayer and some kind of paint to do this. I am no gel printing expert. I learned anything I know from Carolyn Duby from A Colorful Journey. I will link her below in the YouTube description. And off camera, I have a piece of cardstock, old cardstock, that I just clean my brayer off between prints when I don't want to get the colors mixed up. So as you can see, these just all started with some dots of paint that I'm brayering on to the plate. Uh, no rhyme, no reason, and you will never be able to replicate any of your prints, so don't try. <laughs> this old toilet paper roll, I'm trying to add little circles, and this is a shelf liner that I actually had, uh, so I'm just trying to add little patterns here and there. You don't need to go out and buy specific supplies. You usually can find something around your house. Heck, I've printed with a cantaloupe before. This is actually garbage out of my trash can, you know, so don't get wow, don't be going and spending a whole bunch of money. Just try to find what you have. And then I'm trying to wait for it to dry a little bit. I don't know. I'm pretending like I'm playing the piano. I don't know what's happening with my hands. So Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service. I have a coupon code for you and it's 55% off, which means that puts us at $8 just to try it out to see if it's something that you like. I also use it as a room spray deodorizer. I have two dogs and a cat. Sometimes it can get stinky up in this house. So let me show you how it works. It just, you turn it to the left to unlock it. You turn it to the right to lock it. Left and right, left and right. And these things just open up very easy. So look, you get a 30 day supply right in there. Let me tell you the scents that I got in case your taste is like mine. This one is Ash East 12th by Ashley Benson. Now we've got La Vanilla. Pure vanilla. Love this because I'm a huge fan of vanilla. Maybe spray that on the dogs. Can't make any promises. I didn't. All right. This one is called Skylar Vanilla Sky. See, got a thing for vanilla. So got me another one right here. And then last but certainly not least, we have Kenzie Zest for Life. So all four scents that I tried, I love. So go online, you take the quiz, put the scents you like, and they give you what they recommend. Use that 50% off coupon code in the description below. So once it's fairly, not, you don't want it to be too dry because if it's too dry, you're not going to lift the paint. But you want, I gave it, I don't know, 60 seconds or so. Then I put my regular cardstock down, taking two prints at the same time. All right, and then we'll get a little bit further into letting things dry to create a layer. I am not making a whole bunch of prints. I find that those videos can be very overwhelming. I make maybe seven, but with the same paints that I'm using, the same prints. So here's a look at this one. How cool is that? All the, the, the texture from the shelf liner and, and the blue blobs. I just think it's super duper cool, right? I'll show you all still photos of these prints towards the end of the video. And here's a look at this one. Now this paint had dried more. It dried quicker. So Arteza paint apparently dries quicker and that's that print. And you still have a lot of that empty space, but it didn't pull up a lot of paint. It's still super cool. I think gel printing is all about experimenting. So the left paint or the plate, print, plate, whatever, was still wet. So I pulled a second print, which the term is called ghost print. I'll show you both these pictures, still photos at the end of, towards the end of the video, don't forget. So uh, I'm kind of moving along because I don't want my paint to completely dry. And now you can see that plate on the, on the right is completely dry, completely dry because nothing lifted up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add some paint over the top. I'm adding it over the dry paint. If you add it to wet paint, it's obviously going to 
blend together. So this is just some gold paint. I'm just braying it on. I'm using a little of what's left over to put it on the plate to the left there. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of stenciling action. So I've got a whole load of stencils. I don't know where any of them came from. I'm sorry, uh, but most of my stencils come from Joggles, scrapbook.com, or the Crafters Workshop. All right, so I've got this stencil. If you're using words, you want this, the words to be face down, not face up, because you're making a print. And I'm just going ahead and brayering some dark paint. I have a color wheel that I have like right in front of my face every time I sit down to create. So I'm able to look at the colors and make sure that I'm not adding colors that are gonna turn to mud. So I've gone ahead and taken the blue paint and now I'm putting it over on the left plate. I didn't add enough, I wanted to show you. I basically just brayered the paint away, which was quite interesting. So I'll go ahead and add a whole bunch more. Usually you don't need a lot of paint. Here I am adding a stencil just for a little design, but I have the lines of the square shape of the stencil. I'm trying to brayer that out a little bit. And then I'll add a little bit of blue around the edge of the right plate. And then let's see what happens, right? I'm gonna, of course, use that shelf liner. I use, you know, I just kept, I keep it in a box with all of my paints. Keep the toilet paper roll in the box with all of my paints too. And now let's take some prints. So that has already dried. That's okay, I want it to dry. You want things to dry to create layers. So now I'm gonna add a lighter color at the top. It's a silver metallic paint, I guess. You could use white, anything that's lighter. I find you'll probably get better results just from playing. Again, I am no expert. I have no idea the science behind how this works. I just sit down and play and hopefully create something that's cool. So I've gone ahead and done that. I'm gonna add a little bit of pink. And when you add the pink and the silver together, you get a cool like purple look, which is super cool. So I'm just adding a thin layer, but of a bunch of different colors. And we're gonna see what happens. And again, I added it over the dry paint, which means everything that was dry underneath is kind of locked in. And now I'm adding the wet paint over the top, adding a little design with my shelf liner, and then let's pull this print. So it should pull everything that we just put down plus what was dry underneath. So as I lift it, let's see what happens. Whoa, cool paint, a little grungy, but it's a very cool print that you can add something to. You can take a stencil and stencil over it in black ink. You can cut this down into four pieces and you've got four card backgrounds, right? That's the cool thing about making prints is you get a whole bunch of card backgrounds. All right, so we've got this grunge look around the right plate, which I always find fascinating. I think it's very cool. So let's go ahead and finish up on the right hand plate while the paint on the left is drying. All right, so I'm just adding some pinks, I'm adding some purples, whatever floats your boat, it doesn't matter. Again, don't mix colors that are across from each other on the color wheel, because if you do, it will turn to like a muddy brown or something like that. So hey, that might be your jam, that's cool if that's what you want. But uh, I always have a color wheel in front of me. All right, so the paint is still wet on the right plate, so I'm taking a stencil with nothing over it. I ran the brayer over the top and that basically lifted the paint and gave me that stencil design. Now I'm gonna take my print. Make sure there's good pressure, your paper needs to meet the plate. Otherwise the paint will not transfer. And look, oh, look at that, look it. I've also cleaned my plate there, so I'm done with that right plate. Bly, all that stuff around the edges, I'm leaving it. All right, so for the one on the left, same stencil, but the paint is not wet. So therefore I have to put the paint on the stencil and brayer it through, because my paint is dry. All right, so I'm going, I'm brayering, I'm making sure, you didn't even have, you could have done a partial stencil and it would have been fine. So it was a little light for me, so I'm. this is such a light touch. I am so lightly braying over a little bit of blue just to soften that silver. If you press too hard, you're losing your design because it's paint, all right? So lightly press, now let's take our print, let's see what happens. Again, firm pressure with your hand, Make sure the paper meets the print. Sometimes you gotta let it sit there long. If you let it sit there too long, it'll rip. It's all trial and error. But uh, when you peel it up, hi, that's gorgeous. I think that is absolutely stunning. You can see the shelf liner. You can see the print from the stencil. You can see some of the empty spots from where the paint was already lifted up. It is just cool what you get on these things. And it's a unique piece of art because you can never, ever replicate it. All right, so we're going to finish up on the left side. I still got a lot of paint on there. Let's go ahead and pull that up. To pull up dry paint, you have to activate it with wet paint. All right, so I just added a very little, but this is like a Kelly green. I don't know. It was a nice, bright, fun color. I liked it. So I'm just simply brayering that right over the top. No rhyme, no reason. And we're going to go ahead and clean this plate, but I'm actually going to get two prints. 
All right, so here is one print that I, I didn't like. And when I take it, I'll show you why. So I went ahead and pulled it. It was fine, right? There's nothing wrong with it. This is just personal preference. That's all. All right, so I'm going to pull that up. And it was, it was pretty. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. I should have just left it. But of course I didn't because I'm me. And it was too much of a blank spot on that kind of right, right where I'm pointing. It was a little too blank for me. So I decided let's add a little design. Let's see if I can do a little, you know, pick up parts here and there. So I grabbed some blue, whatever color. Again, color wheel. They sit next to each other on the color wheel. They're happy. And I'm just going to, I didn't do a lot of paint. I don't want big globs of paint on my, on my plate there. And then I needed, I tried to add a little bit of a pattern there, right? Just by using that dry stencil. Let's see what happens. It was cool. So I pressed it down. No problem. But now I have that big line going through the center that I wasn't really too keen on. So I'm trying to blend out the line. Eh, it was all right. Whatever. This is one print that I can cut down and use the stenciled area as the star of my card. Do not throw it away. Cut it up. Use word dyes unless it's just a hideous color, uh, you can you can do something with that. All right, so this is going to be the final print. I want to clean off the plate. So again, I need to add some wet paint to activate what's underneath. So blue, happy, happy in your face blue, color of the sky. Sometimes I wish it was. And we'll go ahead and pull that up. And at the same time, that's kind of cleaning off your plate. Do I clean my plates? No. They're left just like this. Do I clean my stencils? No. I just let the paint dry on them and just move on personal preference again. So now I've pulled that up and then you're left with every single thing that was on that plate pulled up and it's so cool. Let's look at the still shots of all the prints I made. Except the one of that fabulous stencil. My daughter took that, that little stinker. I'll have to go find it, but it's not in my room anymore. But anyway, here's all the backgrounds. So if I made seven backgrounds and they're all decent and I like them, I can cut them up into cards. So you would get four card backgrounds per card. So seven times four, at least I can do the basic math of a kindergartner. That's 28 card backgrounds you have right here by doing these few things. We use the same paint, the same two plates, just a couple of sheets of paper, well, seven sheets of paper, and bada bang, bada boom. What do you think? What do you think about gel printing your cards? Let me know.